right, friends, we are going to be painting a watercolor portrait today. I have already printed out my portrait. I did this sketch digitally on my iPad Pro, and then I printed the sketch on watercolor paper. And this is a 9 by 12 sheet. You can do this any size. If you would like to take some time and do a sketch digitally, then you can also print it out the same way that I did. Or you can just do your own sketch, maybe trace an image. There are many options of how to do a portrait. I am not going to be covering that in this video. I'm more going to focus on how to use watercolor paint to create realistic skin tones and um, yeah, go over some of the techniques I've learned there. Um, if you are interested in maybe like doing a portrait but you don't feel as comfortable drawing, then you can actually take an image, print it out, and then use your watercolor paper, place it on top of the portrait, put it up to a window or any light source. I have a light table that I use that I can use for tracing. Um, you can also put your paper that you want to trace the image onto on top of your iPad if you have an iPad. So you can use the light from the iPad shining through the paper to then transfer the image onto your watercolor paper. A lot of times I will just sketch directly onto my paper, but for today I wanted to make sure that I had my portrait ready to go and I didn't want to run into any issues. So let's go ahead and get started. And then I just have some cheap brushes from Arteza Art Supplies and they're really good for details. And then paints, obviously, you don't have to use the exact same paints as me. The majority of my paints are Windsor & Newton brand. brand. Um, those can be a little bit expensive, so really you can use any colors. The biggest thing that matters in painting a watercolor portrait is making sure that you get the values right. So if there's lights you know, in different areas, then you want to make sure that you preserve that light. And then if there are darks or shadows, you want to make sure that you're using enough color and darkness to make it feel like it has dimension. So we will get started. You want to use any masking tape that will not rip up the paper once you're finished. So I'm going to tape down along where my sketch ends. And this will keep my paper from buckling when it gets wet. It will buckle still, but it'll at least keep it in generally the right spot. <coughs> you can use masking tape. This is actual artist tape. You can buy that on blick.com or in any art supply store. Just anything that's not so sticky that it's going to bring up paper with it once you are finished and you take the tape. You'll also want a paper towel and some kind of palette, obviously, and a cup of water. Okay, so when you're getting started painting a portrait, you want to identify the lightest tones in the face. And I generally start with my yellow color. So I am going to grab my yellow. Okay, and you can put a decent amount of water in there so it's not too dark, because I know that can be so scary to put color down on a face. But the more water you add to your paint, the lighter the color will be, and you can always do more layers. You don't want to do so many layers that you rip up your paper, but yeah, a lighter color is safer to start with. So I am going to do kind of the mid highlight tones here. There's definitely some yellow under her eye and around her eye. Her lip, and I'll go over her lips as well. up into her hair so it's not a weird line. And you can 
can see right here and here and along the bridge of the nose, I'm preserving that white space with watercolor. You can always add more. It is more difficult to take it away because you can't just paint over it. I mean, you can use a different medium, but you can't really get white space back. So it's good to preserve the lightest lights in your portrait. And then you can always go back and add color if you decide that it's too much. And we'll fill in her hands. So if you feel like as you're putting this color down and you don't like how hard an edge is, like, I don't really like how crisp that white line is. You can basically rinse out your brush, dry it off, and then go along the line of the paint, and it'll suck up the edge of that water and kind of soften that line. And you can do that as many times as you want. You want to kind of blend that edge in. Right now, this yellow is so light, it's really not going to matter. Okay, we're gonna wait for this yellow to dry, obviously. So I'm actually gonna go into her hair with some orange. I know that her hair is brown, but colors are never just one color. There are always many colors making up our world that we see. So in my skin, there are lots of pinks. It's not just a beige color. I've got purples, blues, greens, yellows, all of those colors. And obviously some of them are going to be stronger than others, but it's important to not just take a brown and cover her whole head with brown because that'll make it look really flat and frankly, like a beginner painted it. So I recommend kind of finding the predominant colors that pop out at you. For me, I really like this auburn color that's under her hair. So I'm going to go in with some of that. I'm mixing it with a little bit of maybe purplish color that's on my palette already. And again, like I said, you don't have to stress so much about having the perfect color because you can always add more. You can always, you know, if you don't like the way that a purple or orange is looking, you can add more blue to it. You can, you can go in with a brown, you know, at some point, but it's nice to have an array of colors. I see a lot of blue shadow over here on this side, so I'm gonna just drop some of that in right now. While it's wet, let those blend together. Ooh, that's pretty bright blue. It's okay though. It'll look nice as we keep adding layers. And if I don't like how you know bright this is, I can pick some of that color up too with a dry brush. But well, partially dry. You would want a slightly wet brush. Anyways. Let's move on. How dry is my face? She's not super dry, but frankly, it's not a bad thing for these colors to blend together a little bit. So I'm going to now take my orange. That is the second color I generally go into my skin with. And this orange is pretty freaking bright. So I will generally dilute it quite a bit. You can always mix it with a little bit of yellow too. If you're like, ooh, it looks really orange to me. I don't know what to do. It scares you a little bit. Okay. So, you're going to, this isn't probably like the best thing to be showing you because technically I wouldn't usually want to go up against this blue because it's still wet. So it's going to bleed into my orange, but we're going to bring blue into her face at some point. And these are all such light colors still that it's really not a huge deal. I'm just kind of dropping oranges in her face wherever I see maybe more mid-tones and I'm not really that worried about it being perfect because we're just getting shades in there and it's okay if it's not perfectly blended because we can do more of that work later as we layer lots of different colors together. I'm doing this pretty loose because I feel like it. You can obviously be more precise as you're going through yours if you're feeling nervous about getting it exactly right, but watercolor is nice because it can be pretty forgiving, so. I'm 
working with these mid-tones, you know, you can start painting the shadows in there. Like on the sides of her nose, it's going to be darker than the bridge of her nose. The orange does kind of come up onto her bridge of her nose, but the right, you know, right in the middle of it is pretty light. And actually the tip of her nose is pretty light too, so I'm just grabbing some of that color with my finger and removing it. And then obviously her hair is going to get much darker, so it's okay, you know, if you brought your orange even all the way up and in. It doesn't really matter. It's just going to add more dimension and color to her face. There's quite a bit of orange right around her eyes. Might be eyeshadow or it might just be her skin. So I'm probably gonna add that in right now. Probably even keep adding more. And we'll add some hair on her neck and around her jaw, because there's quite a bit of orange there. And it's okay if I even get this into her shirt, because her shirt's going to be pretty dark later. You can see there's a bit of, you know, pinkish orange on the tops of her hands. I know when I first started painting portraits, I was so afraid to put any color down. But the nice thing about watercolors, it's always going to dry lighter than when you put it down initially. So you'll put down a really light layer because you're afraid and then you'll realize that you wish you had put more color down in the first place because it's nowhere near what it looked like when it was wet. And so you'll have to do three more layers to make up for it. <laughs> So it's really okay if you put down, you know, quite a bit of color, because again, it doesn't have to be the perfect color, it just needs to be the right value. And as you are laying down these lights, it can feel like a lot, but you're gonna keep making darker and darker layers, and then these are gonna look so, so light that you don't even notice them. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. I think I'm gonna Drop some more orange in on the top of her hands. So. If you drop color into this wet paint, it's gonna just kind of bleed, which is nice. Then you don't have to worry about blending it yourself. Maybe that's a little bright, but it's kind of fun. So I'm just gonna leave it. And it gets pretty dark here at the base of her arm because it's going into shadow. Her cheeks are more orange. I really love the orange in her cheeks. It's one of the reasons I picked this. More around her eyes. Okay. Something you want to watch for is if you drop too much water in and let it dry, sometimes it'll make what's called a blossom, which is where the paint just kind of splotches out and actually there's one happening right here. See that? There's like a weird spray of color right there. It's not necessarily bad. It might not be the texture you're wanting to go for. With skin, you generally kind of want it to be like smooth, but eh. Is our skin really that smooth? Probably not. So it's okay if you get some of those, but you can also pick up water. You know, like here I've got quite a bit of water, so I can pick it up with a dry brush. And then right now, while the paint's still a little bit wet, I'm just going around and blending some edges with my mostly dry brush. All right. I think that looks pretty good for now. Oh man, that orange does not want to stay, so we're gonna drop in some crazy color. This orange is kind of granular, so it doesn't really behave. That's okay. Our 
Sturgeon's granular too. I'm just gonna roll with it. And because of that color on my brush, I'm just gonna drop it into her hair. Awesome. So you can see the water or the paper is buckling now, but because we taped it down as it dries, it is gonna flatten out again. And I am going to use my dryer to dry this baby. All right, I don't think I'm gonna dry that all the way. I think I'm going to get started on maybe her suit. Hmm, I wasn't gonna do orange, but I think I will actually. Maybe we'll start with her dark suit so that I can get a feel for that. Even in black, there are multiple colors. I am starting with like a color that's pretty close to black, but it's kind of a purplish blue. But, yeah, you can really drop whatever colors in there you want. Purples, blues, greens, yellows probably won't show up that much. It'll turn into brown. It's just so much more fun than just a solid black. Actually, I probably will transfer over to a small brush. And we're gonna drop in some other color. Oh, love that green. Maybe yeah, that's what I'll do her suit. Okay, back to our little lady's face. So then once you've done orange and yellow, the next color is blue. I generally use my cerulean color. This is another one I know is scary, so we can water it down quite a bit. And this is where you're just kind of hitting those darkest shadows of the face, so. For her, it's gonna be obviously her nostrils, her mouth, um, underneath her chin, her jawline, maybe you know these outer corners around the eye, under her hair, all yeah, all those areas. This stage, the painting looks a little crazy, but I kind of love it too because it's kind of like cotton candy. Okay, and we are gonna darken her hair too. I'll probably go in with some purplish blue. Kinda try to preserve the highlights in her hair. She's got lighter areas up at the top of her head, like most of us do. And this strand here seems like it should be pretty light as well. Right here, you can see these colors are blending. That's also like a blossom because I left too much water in one pile. So if you notice that happening, it's not a big deal because this shirt is gonna go even darker, but you can just kind of blend it out. So you can see all the colors kind of they're being glazed on top of each other, so in really light layers. So they're kind of starting to blend. Um, she still looks a little crazy, but the idea is most people's skin is obviously gonna be made up of red, yellow, and blue. Well, orange, yellow, and blue. 
That's what I'm using. You can use pinks. I will probably bring in pinks later. But over time, as we continue layering these, it'll uh, start to give a real skin effect. Tops of her fingers are pretty dark. Now that we've done our first layer of blue, we are going to go in with more layers of yellow. I'm kind of just looking for areas where I maybe feel like it's a little too blue, where I feel like her skin is not dark enough yet. And these second layers are where the skin really starts to come to life. Guys, no, no, back up, Sora. Seeing a lot of purple and pink in her hands, so I'm going to go in with some pink now. Got her pinks all on her jaw that I did not see before. Glad I grabbed this pink. Definitely something. Uh, I just love to help these colors start to blend. If you're noticing any of these hard lines that you really hate, they really are not always bad. It can be kind of fun. It can add some definition. But again, if you go in with a mostly dry brush. A little bit of water in it. You can buff out those lines a lot of the time. So cute. I'm going to do her dark part of her nose. I start with some blue. It's a little too wet. I probably should have waited. But I'm impatient. And it's honestly not that big of a deal. Because she could use some more blue under her nose. It's pretty shadowy. So I'll just leave it for now. And at this point, it might be fun to start doing her eyes. Because that can also really help bring this portrait to life. So I am going to off her pupils, I think. Hers are kind of greenish. I'm going in with the blue for this outline. And the eyes, too, again, like everything, every color has multiple colors in it. So it's a lot more fun when you're painting if you use multiple colors. It's a lot more interesting to look at. Does it feel more realistic? Don't know that this portrait's necessarily gonna end up being that realistic, but it's gonna be pretty, I know that. So I'm going around this dark part, her pupil, 
top it off. I think I might just let that layer dry and come back in later for the really dark center part. I will. some of her eyelashes and I'm not doing her eyelashes super realistically either I really like this uh, kind of pointy lash look okay when I down that was difficult because it's wet over here so I'm probably gonna just blend that color out and I might just wait for it to dry until I do the next eye. There we go. So cute. Maybe we'll start working more on her jacket. Mm -hmm. What color do I want to do? Maybe I will just go for an orange. Then maybe I'll do my flowers and gouache later, like a white. That could be very cute. Gonna grab some orange, some orangey yellow, a little bit of brownish color. Help tone it down a little. Oh, that's cute mustard. I think I want it a little, ooh, that got orange really fast. I think I want some more yellow to tone it down again. Ooh, yeah, there we go. That is nice. I like how the cat hair, always. Okay. We're just gonna go for it. I'm gonna start here, what would be the darkest. And then I don't want this to be a boring coat, so we are going to grab some foam pink and drop it in there. Fun yellow too. Mm. Ooh, that's a lot of paint. It's kind of fun though. So we're gonna roll with it. Ooh, yeah. Kind of cute, like sun kissed. This pink, I love it, it's a little bit grainy. So fun. I love that about watercolor, it's a little bit unmanageable and just kind of does its own thing, especially if you like allow it to. But that's what it can be like really beautiful in a portrait. I mean, if I wanted a photo, I would take a photo, but with watercolor, it gives a little bit more life. So fun. We can get our hair too, and I think it'd be nice to drop some yellow in there as well. So cute. Okay. Okay, when I taped this down originally, I did not do a very good job. I should have taped along the edges of the paper as well. When I came back and found it dried, it had bubbled up quite a bit. So I just taped around all the edges of the paper and it definitely held it down better. If it is still warped after I'm finished with the painting, then I can take the paper, untape it all obviously, flip it over, put some um, paper towels over the back of it Actually, sorry, I'll spray the back of it with water, put some paper towels over it, and then 
put some books on top of it to keep it flat and that should flatten it out because this paper is 100% cotton so it will get the wrinkles out and fix all of the waving that happened. But it, originally I should have started this way and it would have kept the bulging to a minimum. But let's keep going. I think I'll probably do her eye first because she needs some more definition there. I'm gonna go on some purple, cause why not? Can't even really tell. Except the blue is pretty overpowering. There we go, now you can tell. And then we want some green in there too. Definitely crossed over into the white of the eyes more than I wanted, so I'm gonna just blot that. And start again. And I'm maybe gonna ditch some of that blue altogether. So we've got quite a bit of blue in the other eye. That was fun. Nice thing is, if I lose the white of this eye a little too much, I can always go back in with some white gouache because that is opaque so it can go over the watercolor and bring back that white into the eyes, but it is generally nicer if you can just preserve the white of the paper so that all the whites match. Sora, let go. Sora, let go. Uh-uh. No, here, this is your, your paintbrush. Sora, Sora. emphasize the dark area around the center of the eyes. Mm, I should probably wait to do it over here. I'm gonna be mad at myself if I don't. It's just gonna bleed because it's so wet. Okay, and we will probably go into the dark area of her nose too. Sorry, no. Beautiful. That adds so much definition. She starts to look more like a real person. I'm gonna grab some fuchsia kind of color with that purple and do the center of her mouth too. I'd probably add some water here along the center of the lip because it kind of bleeds out, that dark area does. The upper lip too, can't hurt on these sides. Beautiful. Okay, and she's got some dark areas under her eyes that I'm missing and they're kind of reddish. Cat removal service. And there's definitely more orange around the tops of her eyes. Okay, fun. She's starting to look a little more like herself. Her lips definitely need more orange, so I'm going to go in pretty heavy with kind of yellow orange. I want some more of that in her cheeks. It's got pretty yellow over here, but I feel like it's more pinkish orange. Okay, 
Okay, I'm gonna start adding in some more hair around her face because it's looking weird that she doesn't have any hair. We'll start adding some good contrast. Whoops, I forgot her face is still wet right there. So I'm just gonna blend that baby out. And I don't really like how some of her face is blending. So I'm gonna go in and soften those edges. Very cute. Mm, I love this orange right up tucked on her brow bone. So cute. Let's grab that. I'm also seeing a lot of orange she yellow under her hair too, so I might just drop some of that in while the hair is still wet. This suit needs to be darker than her hand, so I'm going to drop a shadow here. some purplish color. And same thing on this side. And this sleeve compartment is going to be way darker, so I'm just going to Stop it right there for now. Fun, fun, fun. I also want this underside of each sleeve to be way darker, so I'm gonna go in with a purple, pink. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of work on her hands, I think. I feel like that can make faster progress than doing oranges and yellows. It's maybe not as realistic too. I mean, she definitely has pinks in her skin, but I just like the way it looks. And then she's got some purple in her nails. Nails are never just white. Orange on the tops of her finger here. That'll be nice because it'll really blend in with her face. Another thing to note with eyes is that they are never fully white. So I'm probably going to do a little bit of a blue wash over them. Okay, I've been playing pretty safe. I'm playing it pretty safe with these colors. And it's going really slowly and I need to get through this in an hour. So I'm going to drop in some bolder colors. Because her lips are pretty freaking dark. Seeing that color is actually a lot closer to what it actually is in the photo. I'm gonna water this down, grab some more orange and drop in her cheeks again because those are much darker than, uh, see I'm using too much water again. 
gonna drop some more color in there. It's very easy with watercolor to wanna do the most light possible layers you can manage to avoid, you know, using too dark of colors, but it goes a lot faster if you just drop the damn color in there. Softening that edge. Gonna orange up the bottom of her nose again. I think the next step that's gonna help a lot is getting her shirt dark and doing her hair. The nice thing is each time I put in a darker value, it kind of helps me figure out better like where I need to keep adding more color because sometimes when everything starts to get really close to the same values, I can feel like, oh, I don't know where to go next. But as I'm dropping in this shirt and making it darker like it's actually supposed to be, it's helping me see, okay, the hair is probably my next step for sure. And then once I do that, I think that's gonna really help me start going way darker and more bold on the skin too. So yeah, I think I'm also going to focus on dropping in the shadow, this really deep shadow in her sleeves. And I still have some purple on my brush, so I'm just gonna drop it into her hair, because that can't hurt. Especially because we still need to go so dark with her hair. I'm still working on this, but Generally with hair, you want a round brush and you start pressing softly, push down harder so the, bread, the brush spreads out and then end up light again. And then I'll give you kind of like the swoopy look of hair, the thick tip ends that you need. You can see some of these splotches of the jacket where the water dried. That doesn't bug me as much as it bugs me on the face, right? Like little ones here and there, like around her nose and her lip and her eye up here don't really bug me, but with your skin, you know, you kind of want it to be somewhat smooth. And the nice thing with watercolors, as you kind of layer over time, you're not going to notice those as much and they can add some cool texture. But yeah, especially in the clothing, I'm like, I kind of love that. It's in here too, because it gives it more natural texture that I never would have been able to like paint on my own if I was trying to create that on purpose. So that's one of the beauties of watercolor. Rather than just big chunks, it's good to start with the big chunks when you're drawing the hair because that keeps it feeling like natural, the way the hair kind of divides into sections, instead of drawing every single individual strand of hair, but then those details can really be nice too. Probably grab a different color. If I wanted to make this hair more realistic, and where it's feeling kind of yellowish, you know, I might drop in the complementary color to make a brown. So I'll still get that. I'll show you here. It doesn't all have to be colorful. So with these yellows, the complementary color would be a purple. And I'm probably gonna grab a little bit of red too, because that makes more of an auburn color. So I'd probably drop that in and over. And I could also grab some actual like brown colors, burnt sienna. I forgot what the other one is called. You know, I can drop that here and there. It's really just a dark yellow. So there's nothing wrong with using browns and using the actual colors, but 
it does definitely give it more of a playful feel if you keep other colors in the mix. Because if I just did a straight wash of this, it would all be the same color. And that just gets really boring. Her eyes are definitely darker, a little bit more brown, so I think I'm going to go in with some pinkish reds. I'm going to avoid the left side of her eye though, because it's pretty light. I think I'll probably preserve that side as well a little more. Her nose can definitely go darker. Okay, and then I want a more distinctive line here around her nose. And it kind of comes up here through her bridge, follows up in here. And then she's got kind of a pinky patch above her eye right here. Goes over her eye like that. She has the same one over on the other side. As I'm going through, I'm just kind of looking at, okay, where is there color that I have missed in the past? You don't start to see some of these colors that you're lacking until you've got color down and you start to hit those darker shadows. So it's kind of fun to just keep adding, realize what you're missing. Layer it up. Pretty orange right here. It can be so hard to like put color down and leave it because you're afraid of it being too bold. I think I'm gonna try to just soften the edges and leave the majority of the color. And oh no, I accidentally hit. Her hair a little, which is still wet, but it's okay. And same thing on the other side. She's definitely just got more pink in her, pinkish orange in her cheeks than. Currently have there. Okay, we're gonna go in with some of this dark color into her lips. Maybe I should wait to do this because my hands are a little shaky, but I'm going to try. This shadow needs to be way more apparent, so I am just going to drop in some intense purple. I don't mind these splatters, so we're just gonna leave them. I think some other purple and some of the shadows will help. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to go in and try to add some more shadows on her skin. So I'm going to take some blue and pink, like kind of a purpley color. Gonna darken up her hair. After I've added a lot of crazy colors, I'll kind of like go in with the normal color you would think would be there, like kind of brown. And her hair has quite a bit of red brown in it, so I really like. Oh, I'm so bad with the colors, but I think it's burnt sienna. I really like how red and kind of pinky it is up towards that side of her hair because it's like mixing with the orange background that she's in front of. So I'm going to add some pink along there. I'm adding some blue in here because I don't think the purple has really been working terribly well for shadows. I think that getting the yellow and blue to kind of mix and make a green is making that shadow feel a lot more realistic. The purple is just kind of making it more brown, which I've already used quite a bit. So I'm like loving the purple going over the yellow or the blue going over the yellow. Blues and purples are really great for shadows. You can kind of just switch what you use based on what else is already there. And this would be a glaze. Having this blue go on lightly over the yellow. Because I, ooh, I don't know what that was from. Let's have a little streak in my brush. Paint. That's okay. We will rebuild. I'll drop in some more blue there. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Hmm, that is dreamy. I'm gonna do some of that here too. Because that is also probably pretty shadowy, definitely is in the picture. This, same thing. The other nice thing about the blue is it's kind of like separating it from the skin really well. So I'm very, very excited that I started doing that because I was struggling with the coat quite a bit. 